Uh, welcome back, everyone. In the last video, we did functions. Uh, this week, or this time, we're going to do something. Uh, it's kind of like the next step, and that's uh, conditions or conditionals. And these work well with functions and hotkeys and and graphic user interfaces and variables and all those other things that we've done so far. And uh, this kind of you can use all that stuff with conditions, and it makes it uh, different or better. Or, however you want to say it. And um, this is an example of how a condition would be set up. And it has if condition, then do this. Else if other condition, then do this. Else, and then has a default action. So you can have, uh, the structure is you have to have an if. That's the main part. And uh, it has a, a thing that it does. And then you can have no else ifs. So we could get rid of this completely. And it would just be like that. And you don't need an else either. So uh, everything besides the if is optional. And also you can have as many else ifs as you want. So we could have um, this and then another. And then another else if. And then another else if. And you can keep going like this. So if this condition is true, we're going to skip over all the else ifs and all the else's. And we're just going to uh, come down here to this part of the code. So whatever's after this will get run. And it'll skip all these other things. So uh, we're going to explain what a condition is in a second. Um, but this is the main structure. And there's another way to do it. You see we just have a blank line or a indented line for our action. If you have more than one action or you want to make it really clear what you're inside, what if you're inside of, uh, you can do it like this, and you can put brackets around your actions. So we have if, and then brackets, and then action, else if, uh, condition, bracket, action. And it works like that. That's another way to do it. And you can even mix and match if you choose. So we could get rid of these brackets here, and have them on the if, and have them on the else, but on the else if. So it's, it's really a style if you only have one thing. But if you have more than one, you can't do another action there. You can't do that. That's that's not right. Uh, it'll actually run as if it was like this. And the else would give you an error here. And it, it's usually safer to use brackets. <laughs> that's the uh, general rule, I guess. All right, so we're going to go and we're going to look at this true false thing. All right, so we have all these uh, conditions here. And they just uh, come to a function, and we have, we check if, if this is a true condition, then we want to run our code down here. So if v is true, then we're going to add some output, and it's going to say that it's true. Otherwise, else, we're going to add something and say it's false. All right, and the main uh, purpose of this example is to show what is true and what is false. Because that's how these conditions work. It's if whatever's in here is true, do this action. Otherwise, it keeps going through the else ifs and the else's and all that. So it, it's checking if this condition is true as opposed to false. So we're going to come up here, and we're just going to run this program. So I'm going to press F5 to run this. OK? And we have this output here. All right, so we're going to look at this. Each one of these lines that says test on it uh, represents one line of output or corresponds to one line of output. So we're going to throw this over here. OK. So a blank string. This is um, just a blank string with nothing inside it. We can see over in our box here that it's false. Um, if you use a variable that doesn't have a value, so we never set some unset variable. We never set that and gave it a value. That's also false. It's assumed to be false. The number zero is false. The word false, like as if you were using a variable, when you just type false, um, that is itself false. And then everything else after here is true, everything down here. So the word true, the variable true, is in fact true. And this is a weird one. All right, If you put false in these double quotes here, if you quote false, 
it's now a string. It doesn't mean the same thing as this variable false. It's um it's completely different. So if you have like your the user of your program input something, you have an input box and they type false in it, it's going to be a string and it's not going to actually mean false. So you might uh you might get caught on that, but there's ways to check for that sort of thing if you're expecting false as an input. Um, I, oh, there's one more I'd like to check, and it's a string zero. I think that's also false, but I'm not sure. So we're just going to add another thing here, and we're going to say the string zero. Uh, tester programs like this are usually a good way to, to understand things. If you want to... Okay, so the string zero, this is actually also false. So we can move that up to our false things. All right. And... Um, so the variable true we said is true. One is true. And that's actually what true means. If you assign true to a variable, it's going to it's gonna be stored as one. Uh, any other number, for example, 1,000 or even negative one, those are also true. Those will be true. So if you say if negative one, it's going to always be true. Okay? And if you set a variable to, a, to anything that is true, so if we said set variable uh, equals true, then this is going to also say true, and it did when we did our test. Now one of the things you have to check for and be uh, a little worried about is if you say false, okay? Uh, in the expressions and when to use uh, percent uh, when to use percentage signs video, we talked about how it can be dangerous using equals because this isn't doing what you think. This uh, variable here is actually setting it to the string false. This is the same as our example up here, where we check the string false. That's what we're doing down here. So it's usually a good practice to always use the colon equals uh, assignment, unless you have a very good reason not to. Okay, so that's our true false thing, and we're seeing what's true and what's false. Now there's another way to do this, um, and that's to do a condition. So we're going to go over to this next file here, and we're calling this double press dot auto hotkey. All right, and this is something that I see done pretty commonly. It's um people want to see, all right, when is my thing single pressed and when is it double pressed, and all of that sort of stuff that people like to know. So we have our hotkey here, um, and it's F12 on the keyboard, which is the F key all the way on the right. And um, we set last to zero. It's just we just give it a default value, so we have something. We know what it's going to be. We don't have to guess. You know what's last going to start out as. And um, we go here, and we say difference is the time right now minus the time that it was last time. Our now function we define uh, down here a little further, and we don't really need to worry about it. All we need to know is that it gives us uh, milliseconds. It's in thousandths, thousandths of a second. So if we say we come to our condition, right? Um, values for diff are going to be something like like 500 or or like 2,000. Uh, and 2,000 would mean there's two seconds between the last time we pressed F12 and this time we're pressing F12. And you can really, uh, if you really wanted to understand this, you could look through and you could kind of see what order things are being done in and all that. But we know that diff is going to be, you know, just uh, a few thousand or less than a thousand is uh, our range. So we come here and we say if diff, and then we have this symbol here which you may or may not know what it means, and we say diff something a thousand. This symbol is less than, and it's, uh, it's used a lot in math and inequalities, but here we're checking. We don't know that it's true or not. We're checking. So we're saying if diff is less than a thousand, then this is going to be true. So we check this condition. We say diff is less than a thousand, and if that's true, then we're going to do the if stuff. Otherwise, we're going to do the else stuff. So if it's 5,000 or 1,001, 
um, or even 1000, we're not going to do this nice double press thing because it took you more than a second to press it. Um, there's also less than or equal to, which means it could be a thousand or less, whereas the other one it had to be less than a thousand, so it didn't include a thousand. And we could also do greater than, greater than or equal to, equal. Uh, we usually just use one. You can also use two. Uh, there, there's reasons for that with strings. One is uh, case sensitive and one's not. So lowercase abc equals uppercase abc, but uh, we'll, we'll cover that later. Don't worry about it for now. So that's equal and not equal. Uh, there's a reference page which I'll link to with this video, and you can look up all the different uh, equality operators is what they're called. And so you can see how to use that, but we don't want that. We want, we want to check if the difference in time is less than one second or 1000 milliseconds. We're going to give this message, otherwise we give this message, and then we update our last time for the next call to, for the next press of this F12. So we're going to run this, okay, and um, it's going to show up at my mouse cursor at this banana here, and we press F12 once. All right, it says single press. Now I'm going to press it twice really fast, and it says nice double press, okay? So we're doing this condition. Even though we're pressing the same key, it, it checks this condition. This condition could be anything. It could, uh, it could say um, if the month is is uh, November or whatever. It, it could have a different condition um, for different things you want to do. In this case, we're checking to see if we can press one key twice in one second. And if we do, we do a different action than pressing it once. So that's a common thing that uh, conditions are used for in auto hotkey. Um, another thing we can use them for is we can go to our this uh, script I have here and we're making a checkbox. Okay, so we're going to run this and you see we have our checkbox right here. So we're going to check this and hit submit and it gives us a one. That one, uh, as you remember from our true false thing is it's true. One is true. If we uncheck this and we check it again, we have zero. Okay. If you went into the script, you'd see that we're getting we're getting the value of the checkbox, and then we're just displaying whatever it gave us. So we're going to expand on that in another script here, all right? And uh, in this one, we're doing the same thing. All this code up here is the same, and this line. But then instead of just showing my check, which we remember was zero or one, this time we're going to do a condition. So if my check is true, meaning it's checked, it's one, we're going to give this message, and otherwise we're going to give this message. So if it's unchecked, we give this. And uh, that's used a lot. That's really the main use of a checkbox, is to do one thing or another depending on whether it's checked. So we're going to run this again, okay? And we're going to click, uh, we're just going to submit without checking anything. And it gives us a sad message and the sad smiley face thing, okay? And we're going to check it again, or we're going to check it this time, and see what happens when it is checked. So now it says, I love being checked, and it gives us these, like, dancey smiley face things. Um, some people will know where that's from. Others might not. Okay, so we have, we check, if it's checked, we're running this code here. Otherwise, we're running some other code. And that's the idea of conditionals, is sometimes you do one thing and other times you do something else. Um, so that's it for this video. And um, play around with these a little bit, maybe do different things. Uh, there was one more example that I don't think we're going to get to, and that was checking the input from a user. So if, they, if you give an input box or have an edit control in your interface, and uh, you say type something here, you can see... Um, you can use conditions. You can say, all right, if they typed foo, do this. If they typed bar, do something completely different. And that's how uh, that's how pretty much every program that you use works. This does something different if, if uh, all this text is here, or if I'm on this tab versus this tab, 
when I press this button, it does all these different checks and it, it uh, decides what I'm using and what it should respond with. So that's how all sorts of programs work and it's how your programs can work uh, and your scripts when you write an auto hotkey. Uh, see you next time. I, um, next time we're doing some pitfall things. So things, common mistakes that people make. Um, so uh, subscribe to the YouTube and um, follow me on Twitter and all that. And uh, you'll know when the next video comes out. Bye.